Hello everyone. How's everyone doing today? Bethany here. This is Ask a Puppy Trainer Live, episode number three. And Sparky's back. He ditched us last week. I got blood drawn. I was uh I was dizzy. <laughs> You're dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we missed you. I had to talk the whole time, and you know how much I hate talking. It was really hard. I'm sure you uh, you struggled <laughs> tremendously. How's everyone doing today? Hope uh, hope you guys are having a good morning or afternoon now. Yeah, yeah, we are in afternoon. Afternoon. While you guys are logging on, I'm just going to remind you some of the ways that you can submit questions. You can do it beforehand um, through direct messaging. And just be sure to give us the age of your puppy and the breed, and uh, just keep it as, as brief as possible. Not that more information isn't good, it's just a little bit easier to get through. And then you can also type your question in the comments below. I'm going to be joining the live and, uh, and following along as soon as we get through some of our regular questions. And then also you can, um, ask in the IG stories as well. Like we'll have a little questionnaire pop up and you can ask just age and breed and whatever your question is, all right? Well, okay. You ready? Yeah, okay. I, well hang on, I have to join first and for some reason it's not popping up. Just give it to Ricky, she'll do it for you. Ricky, help. <laughs> all right. Okay guys, so our first question is from... Well, here, well, I read this, so do you want me to paraphrase please, it? Please, yeah, please. Okay, so we have from Nicole. She got a brand new puppy. It's <laughs> four month old, thank you. Four month old puppy. And they're really having issues with uh, potty training, which is normal for a four month old. And Nicole just really wants to know um, what, to, what to do. Like what should she expect out of her four month old puppy as far as uh, puppy training goes. She's putting puppy pads all around the house and sometimes he hits it, sometimes he doesn't and praises for uh, potty training. Do you wanna do you wanna start or do you want me? I'll start at the beginning of this one. I know you're gonna have some uh, additional information to throw mm -hmm. in there. So one, let me just clear up a uh, old wives tell puppies do not know where to go. They don't know to automatically look for that potty pad. Even if it's got the scent of the mother and whatever's advertised on the box, you have to <laughs> show. I know it's there, I know like it's your there. Your puppy smells it and mm -hmm. it's like grass and it knows to go there. There's no gravitation. You <laughs> are the gravitation. You yeah. are the thing that takes them to that area to help them go potty. And not only that, but pot puppies that have roam ability, free roam ability, free roam, free roam ability. of the home, it, they're going to have accidents. So you got to kind of contain them in certain areas. Have a leash on your puppy on their harness. Let them kind of follow you around the house and anytime you start feeling them pull to get to a different area, maybe one of those trigger areas where they've had an accent before, that's when I'm like, okay, I think she has to go potty. It's all about habit. It's true. It's and maybe she does, maybe she doesn't, but still give her that opportunity. See if she does, mark it with a good potty when she does finally relieve herself and then you marked a moment. What were you going to say, Bethany? No, just if your puppy gets in the habit of going in the house. It's, it takes a while to come back from that and you have to be on a tight schedule. So if your puppy is free, they should be attached to you or tethered somewhere or confined in a smaller space. Um, you could do that with a baby gate, you could do it with a playpen, you know, whatever you need to do. Or like he said, your puppy is on a harness with you. Uh, those are your options if you're not crate training mm -hmm. for, uh, for potty. And then in your mind, you're going out every two hours and then 15 minutes after having water. And then you learn about your puppy's cues. It's kind of like the same with potty training kids. You start to kind of pick up on cues when they look like they need to go and you give them a chance. Now don't be outside for 30 minutes. Give your puppy three minutes tops um, moving about the area where you want them to potty and, and see if they go. He said, you know, to continue to praise your puppy when they relieve themselves. Wait till they finish though. Midstream, don't go, good go potty. <laughs> we'll suck it right back in. <laughs> Welcome to the next 20 minutes. The lovely visual. Pretty sure this is a male dog too. It's a great oh, yeah. visual. Oh, yeah. um, so anyway, uh, wait till they fully finish uh, bodying before uh, you say good, good job. And then you can give them food or whatever you want, but be pretty chill in the beginning. But I'm going to be honest, I know there are trainers that train with potty bells and they do more um, freedom in the home, but they still will confine the puppy to a space even if they're not crate training. You cannot give your puppy uh, carpeted areas or, or anything like that because they're going to have accidents and then they're going to get in the habit of going in that space. So I would remove any 
rugs that your puppy's already pottied on, because no matter how hard you work, you can't get rid of that scent and start to confine them to an area, hopefully maybe tile or, or something like that. If you're using puppy pads, you need to cover the entire space with puppy pads where your puppy is going. Um, and then how we do that is, say you have a playpen where you're sectioning off a part of the kitchen. It's puppy pads everywhere for two weeks. Your puppy has no choice but to go on puppy pads. Yes, most puppies will chew them up and then this won't work for you. But let's say the puppy's not chewing them. Two weeks, remove one puppy pad. Another two weeks, remove another puppy pad, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then also, just one little side note, puppies can't really start to control their bladder till about six months old, um, effectively, whenever they are having some uh, element of freedom. That's why we crate train, we do crate training rotation. And we love crate training, by the way. We're not against <laughs> crate training. However, it is a big process to go through, and I'm sure we'll probably do a whole nother live that's all about the crate training. But Bethany's giving you some easier solutions to get yeah. you up to that point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Your puppy may take to crate right away. But anyway, those are some tips, Nicole. I hope um, that that helps you. You want to keep going? Because you know, you already read yeah, this one. Yeah, I did. I did. I did a quick read. So Denise, um, hi Denise. You have a new puppy that's 11 weeks old. You got the puppy two days ago, probably been a few more days uh, now. Um, he was so quiet when you first brought him home, tired understandably. Now he's a maniac. No, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, <laughs> now he's running around, nipping, jumping. 10 year old daughter is scared of him. Um, I know it's early, but how do I get him to stop? Um, anything else I can do? Uh, I've said stop taking him out of the room when he does it. Uh, you, you need to be crate training. If you're not crate training, I would definitely encourage you to listen to our past lives. We've had two now. And if you go on IG stories, you can see IGTV, sorry, I don't know the lingo. I'm just, I'm a dog trainer. Um, IGTV, you can find more information about how to live with your puppy, to, to be honest, because you need a structured schedule, no freedom um, in the house. When your 10 year old is around, when she's comfortable, start to do food work. At the end of the day, and I'm not trying to be mean, but at the end of the day, puppies do nip and bite. Um, they, they do, they absolutely do. And, and you can say no and redirect them to food, but it's still gonna take some time for them to, to understand not to do it to you guys. You guys can be firmer, by you guys I mean the parents. You can be firmer, knock it off, uh, don't do that, chew this instead, don't jump up on me. You guys need to be learning about spatial pressure and stopping at thresholds and waiting for food and teaching place right now. If your puppy has energy, you need to be working on place, come, sit all those things and as soon as your 10 year old is ready your puppy will always be a bit more disrespectful towards her i think it's a her um to, yeah daughter that's just the the way it is but you can build her up by having her have food after you've already taught the puppy some basics she has food works with your puppy and have a leash on that puppy so when it gets out of control you take the leash and, and you can move the puppy away um, do you have anything to add to that? It's only 11 weeks old. That was a lot. I know. <laughs> I, uh, you weren't here last week, so I was used to just going on my own. I forgot about you. Would you? Do you have anything to say, Sparky? Whenever you have a kid and you have a puppy that's biting your kid, most of the time, the relationship between a child and a puppy is play, 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 go, go, go. Pets. There's never any kind of like working relationship. The difference between a, an, an adult and a puppy is that you're the one that takes them out for potty. You feed them. You do all these little things throughout the day that builds up a strong working relationship without even realizing you're doing it. So give some of those tasks to your daughter. 11 year old daughter, right? 11, uh, 11 week old, 10 year old daughter. 10 year old daughter. She, she, she she's is old, old enough. enough to take a food bowl and then set it on the ground while you hold the leash and keep the puppy back from her. And then when she's ready, she can give a release or a break, okay, whatever it is. And then you give slack to the puppy and allow him to eat that food from the bowl. Something as simple as holding the bowl up, getting a sit, and then releasing them. First, easiest step of feeding a yeah. puppy. That's a great relationship builder. And like Bethany said, as she gets older and more comfortable with the puppy, the puppy gets maybe even a little bit more relaxed in the setting. Yeah. Then she can start working with food and just getting a simple sit good treat. But, but it kind of sounds like, um, you, you well, I mean, you've only had the puppy for a few days. So mm -hmm. you guys need to spend 24 hours or maybe, maybe a little bit more, but puppies learn so fast, 24 hours. 
doing three or four 10 minute sessions with this puppy, teaching some basics, getting a little bit of focus and control, then add add your daughter into the mix. And and, and I'll you know I'll be honest, if this all sounds overwhelming, and it probably does, um, so start start doing some research. You know, what does a structured schedule look like for a puppy? Mm-hmm. What what does that puppy's day look like? Because if you have an infant, they're being fed every four hours. You you know you're changing diapers. You're doing this. Puppies need schedules too. And so I'm not saying that you weren't prepared for that, but in case you weren't, it's time to get on it. It's like pup, you know, potty, ten minutes training, five minutes play, crate for two hours. You know. You, you need some sort of The more schedule. structure you give, the more fallback they have. Bingo. Puppies have this big burst of energy in camera, big burst of energy. When they don't have a channel for that energy, the energy explodes and goes in whatever direction yeah. they want. Jumping, nipping, pulling, biting. And, the and more channel, no, no, sorry. Go, the go more ahead. channels you have, the more places that energy can go. So that's how you get a calmer puppy. Now go ahead. And, and uh, thank you, thank you. And, and I was just thinking, not that I wasn't listening to you, but I was just thinking that it's quite possible if you had a calm, timid, quiet puppy for 24 hours, I bet you were holding that puppy a lot. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be totally wrong. But if there was a lot of this by everybody, then yeah, when the puppy recuperated, why why would he think he can't just jump all over you and nip at you guys? And Because you've been soft and excited and, and loving. This is not a working relationship. <laughs> this is a love and comfort relationship. Yeah. But the more a puppy gets of that, the first couple of days they're getting comfortable. You have a dog that's comfortable in your home now. And now they're pushing boundaries because it's what puppies do. It's what they do. They're opportunists. It's literally what they were bred to do. They have work drive, whether we realize it or not. They were bred to try to find little like outs for that energy. It's the same reason why I advise people against um, getting a sick dog at a rescue or uh, a shelter because they tend to baby that dog until it's better. And then when it's better, it thinks it can just run roughshod all over the the family. Mm -hmm. And so that can happen just with what, what you experienced in the first 24 hours. So just keep that in mind, Denise, and, um, and it's time to get your schedule. Give that puppy 24 hours of your attention and then add in your little girl. And I think a lot of what we covered is gonna help a lot of our other questions that I've seen as well. So if and it- We have a sample puppy daily schedule. Whoa. Yes, on one of our blogs. If they send us a DM, I can send them a link. If you send us a DM, we have a sample puppy schedule where? Sample puppy potty schedule that we will send you in return. Just to kind of get you guys going. There you go. So it's like cool. uh, how to develop structure as quickly as possible and as easy as possible. It's so funny. She looked like she wanted to say something. I thought she was going to tell me we were going too long. <laughs> <laughs> but that's she, awesome. That's way She better. did want to say that. She didn't want to uh, poop on your confidence. <laughs> okay, one more on here and then we'll get to those. So hello, good afternoon from Natalie. 11-week-old lab. Can't seem to stop biting and destroying puppy pad. Mm. <laughs> yep. She does pee and then she'll run and destroy it. Any tips on how to stop this or potty training suggestions? Natalie, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to refer you to um, the beginning of this live where we talked about the puppy pad situation. What you're dealing with is really common. And yeah, your puppy can't have potty pads, puppy pads. Um, they just can't if they're chewing them up. Now you can get one of those little grassy patch areas. Mm-hmm. There are other things that, that you can do, but your puppy would rather play <laughs> and that happens to a lot of people you'll need more outings and uh more outings um what am i trying to say to take them outside more repetition to mm-hmm. teach them to hold their pee hopefully uh you're doing more frequent training. outings with shorter times of yes. not being able to go out right a really good setup that i like is something that we've actually talked in our online shows as well is when we actually use a playpen and you can buy like a rubber mat from amazon oh, yeah. they're yeah. they're actually pretty inexpensive now like 35 bucks they used to be like 200 bucks and they're really thick but really really solid you can put it under your playpen dog goes in the playpen every couple hours you bring them out of that playpen take them to that potty area it could even be a potty pad if leashed because then you can bring them away from it after they potty fully potty pee stops leaving their body good potty treat walk them away or even guide them away with food and then get them back to an area where they can train and kind of just go over what bethany already mentioned yeah. otherwise potty patch outside 
person we love the potty patches you can even get like companies that will send you potty patches like real turf like yeah. not monthly. turf but like actual real grass like a little little square mm -hmm. monthly those are those That's are really, really nice for yeah. like apartments and stuff so but what you're dealing with is is really common okay. there it's it's not the most natural thing for for puppies however there are some smaller female dogs we've seen very successfully mm -hmm. puppy pad trained yep. but they they don't chew them chew them to bits because <laughs> it's it's fun right it becomes a toy basically even if you have other toys in there with them they'll they'll target the puppy pad yep. they do have those things where you can like clip them in I was just thinking about that if but, you go to Petco they're potty they're called potty pad holders yeah. and they're basically just squares that can fold down and like be put under stuff and it's got little clips on all four corners to hold that potty it. pad you could try it a little bit of that deterrent might help tenacious puppies yeah, 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 yeah. So, just depends. Um, okay, uh, do you want to move on this to this guy those? now? Yep. So we have Ruth Pedal. Why does my puppy turn into a maniac at 10 p.m.? So hard <laughs> to get him to calm down at night. We call it the witching hour. Yep. Yay! Yep. That's Super usually when, common. Yep. That's when your puppy gets that last minute zoomies. I usually say around 8 or 9 p.m. Right when you know they're a little bit before that, that's when I'll leash them up. When a puppy gets that wishing hour and they do the zoomies, it's not necessarily a terrible thing as long as it's not destructive, but personally, we don't recommend it because that's not how we want them to release that energy. Yeah. You want it to, you, we want them to release it in a controlled manner. 8 p.m., I do maybe five or 10 rounds of fetch. Mm -hmm. I'll do like a little tug of war where I'm kind of constantly getting the toy from them and then releasing them to go back for it again. So like I'm winning the tug of war, especially for puppies like that with that burst of energy. It's really helpful if you exhaust the energy your way rather than them doing it their way. Occasionally, it's perfectly fine, mm -hmm. but let's say three, four days in a row, you just were like, ah, oh, he just has energy. Let's mm -hmm. just let him run around. 10 p.m. zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. Trying to get them out of that whenever they get older and they start to get more destructive, more pushy, is really, really difficult. It's, it's just a bad habit. It's okay sometimes, but it's better 75% of the time to be more preventative, like he said, um, they, you could just keep them in crate during this as well. Um, otherwise, work with them. It's like if I was to choose maybe one night out of seven, I would allow some run around and some fun mm -hmm. without the structure, but you just don't want it to become a habit. Um, I don't ever let it inside my house though, ever. Sometimes he's so mean. Long leash, what about harness. What small dogs? What about long, cute little mm -hmm. chihuahuas? Long Could leash, chihuahua. harness, walk to your front yard, even just walk to any open place that's not your living room and just let them do it there. Most time they'll still have fun. What if they live in a, in a condo on the 20th floor in a bad part of town and they can't go outside? You guys can do it in the house. <laughs> yes, got it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Something we mentioned though is destructive zoomies. What is that? That's kind of like running around the house, running nipping, by, doing nipping, nipping at your ankles, your fingers, okay. surfing your couch, grabbing your cushion and shaking it and then running away. That's destructive zoomies. That's destructive zoomies. We don't like destructive zoomies. You just coined a new term. It's the first what time I've heard you say that. There's zoomies. What do I usually call it? Zoomies versus destructive zoomies. I like that. Cool. Six months from now, it's going to be. It's a new part of the program there to talk go. about. Okay, <laughs> all right, moving on. My four-month-old Yorkie Poo is eating her poop, trying to forbid it, but it's not helping. I'm letting you take that one. We've already, I've already talked enough about poop today and dogs. Welcome to pup life. So <laughs> most of your puppies at some point are gonna try to pick up a little nugget of goldness and wonderfulness and then try to carry it around like her dog did for first six months of her life. Yeah, you know, I was gonna bring that up. Happy, my little dog uh -huh. happy. She's 15 now. Uh-huh. Yeah. Easiest way to prevent that is to literally prevent that. Yeah. The minute they go poop, you don't do any outings for potties unless they're leashed up. If you have a habit like this that you're trying to break, and the minute they finish pooping, try to guide them away with gentle leash pressure, preventing them from getting to that wonderful little nugget, and then use food to guide them away. Good treat. With one hand, hold them... With one hand, hold them on the leash. Other hand, pick up your little nugget and then bag it, this toss is, it. This is four months old though. So you could be a bit firmer. You could be uh, kind of what he's going into is definitely puppy puppy mode. Four months old is kind of starting to push it. You could do a little bit more accountability, which is like sit, wait while you pick up poo. Um, also just telling your dog no, um, starting to add in some sort of deterrent for the intention of going after poop. So what I mean by that is if I'm walking by poop and my dog is gunning 
for it, there's some no, some interrupter for the intention of thinking about it. Pet corrector is a really, yeah. really great one Scorched for that. Squirts out air. So Scorched it just does air. a really loud, like a burst of air. So you can target that moment where they're about to like, they lock in on it, mm -hmm. spray, no, guide them away, keep on walking past it. Take a glance at diet, take a glance at your food, but honestly, mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of time, it doesn't always have to do with deficiency. They're animals, they're gross. They like it, it's just, they, they, okay, they like it. Okay, can we move on? But yeah, coprophagia, little drops of like pineapple juice in the food, it probably isn't gonna work. I, sometimes heard, it does, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And not to just send you into the world of Google, but mm -hmm. you could you could ask your vet a few deterrents or something like that. I have a multi chun. I know I didn't, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> she just she left that one to me. Well, wait, if it's Bichon, then it's it's Sha. a multi chun. Multi chun. So I have a multi chun, eleven weeks old. Wow, a lot of eleven week old dogs. He won't move on the lead when I try to bring him for a walk. He's kind of young. He's kind of yeah. young. Eleven weeks old. So try walking him inside and. Yeah. Take pressure off that leash. Try to just guide him with food. So walk him a few steps for the food, like guidance for the food, good treat. Try to walk a few steps without food. He doesn't do it, a few more steps with food. Just try to like uh, kind of bring him into the zone of using that leash yeah. without the pull, without the punishment of not following yeah. and getting pulled. A lot of our that, puppies- Because that is punishment. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but we don't, mean, the leash. we don't mean punishment is like mm -hmm. no bad dog. Just a dog feeling leash tension is a mm -hmm. really foreign concept and they see it as something to push against a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Plus I bet your puppy's nervous in their new neighborhood outside. So like he said, you work in the house and in the front mm -hmm. yard or, or front of your apartment building first before you try to do more than that. And go to parks where there's more room to breathe yeah. and there's not sure. cars right there. Things like just that. Just to give you an idea, we do almost one full week minimum of just teaching leash pressure and following food before we expect the dog to go outside. Yeah. Honestly though, we do usually about like two weeks and then we'll do yeah. another week outside of just, just super front, low pressure. Yeah, in front just of- in front of our- Facility, just our low, facility, low In front of our facility, it's not our facility. facility. <laughs> super low pressure just to get them used to it. And then as you do that more and more, they get more confident. Another great technique is let them drag around their leash in the house oh, yeah. on the harness. When supervised. Yes, when supervised. Yeah. Biting the leash. Mm -hmm. But when supervised, just to get them used to it. Some dogs, when they feel that leash, I know a lot of Yorkies, um, just any small dog, but that leash kind of limits them. They don't want to move at all. Yeah, they don't know what to do yeah. with it, and they're a little nervous. We have a really busy street in front of the facility, and so when we transition puppies under 16 weeks old to outside, we pick them up and carry them around the corner to the quieter area when we start introducing outside stuff. So just just keep that in mind. I this one for last because I like you, this you one. You want? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry. All right. The tenacity. Tilly the Doodle Pup. I love that Tilly. Tilly. Tilly come, that's from some old show or something. Tilly, okay, anyway. 12 week old puppy is growling at our kids when they pick her up. How should we treat this? Guys, this is so common. This is such a common problem. It does not mean necessarily that your puppy's gonna be aggressive or anything like that. Let me just say that starting off. It does mean that your puppy, you can go into the nice stuff later. It does mean that your puppy is getting too much attention too much affection, too much pressure from your potentially whole family. And, and they, they, kids need to learn to respect animals first. Not that your kids don't know how to, that's not what I'm saying, but, but there does need to be an element of um, restraint and kind of teaching your kids to assess the, the puppy. Is the puppy sleeping? Don't we don't bother the puppy when they're sleeping? Think things like that. Teach your kids again. Not that you're not, but <laughs> and for everyone else out there, not for Tilly the Doodle Pup family. Um, make sure you're, you're teaching your kids to respect animals first, and that if they want to pet the puppy, I always like to say this in my owner lessons. And sometimes I get like big eyes from the kids. I'm like if you want to pet this puppy, then you got to work with the puppy. And so give um, give your your uh, kids things to do with the puppy that you've already worked on. So the puppy's uh, memory of them isn't always these hands coming in. Yeah, at their at their face because the vast majority of the time when we see this, which is pretty often, puppies are on furniture. Um, or they're just being smothered. 
And maybe for another puppy, it'd be perfectly fine. That puppy wouldn't mind being smothered, mm -hmm. but your puppy minds it. So you, you've got to start listening um, to what your puppy's trying to, to tell you. Okay, that's my, my, my bad cop. You want to go good cop? I also don't see what kind of puppy it is. So um, certain breeds too. Oh, will be... do, the doodle pup. Oh, doodle pup. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny because doodles tend to be a little bit a uh, little bit more relaxed and getting they picked do. up they tend to so, be, but they can be really feisty it's true it really just feisty. tends to tell me though that if we do have a doodle pup that is getting a little bit growly the amount of picking up they're getting falls in what bethany was saying another thing that we try to do is use food if you're if your kids want to go pick up the puppy make sure they're awake they're not dead asleep in a slumber having a dream about playing with another dog that they're nipping already i'm just kidding but <laughs> as they go to pick them up have a little handful of food let them eat the food from their palm and then slowly pick them up or just maybe like ruffle the ears play with their paws yeah. like you have ways of what we call counter conditioning which means that you're associating good things with being picked up and again, that work relationship is huge. We already talked about it earlier. Work relationship is all about teaching the puppy that these kids aren't just here to pick you up and bother you, but they're here to work with you and build that training relationship and be your leaders, not just your siblings. And I bet the puppy loves it most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's not Tilly, a lot of puppies out there, that's what I'll get back when, when I say that. Oh, but, but our puppy likes it a good portion of the time. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but enough is enough. And they're, they're trying to tell you when enough is enough. But you don't want that. You want to be preventative. You don't want your puppy telling your family when they've mm -hmm. had it. So you want to really be preventative and, and catch that earlier. Really and good point. Another, so young, but another suggestion I would make, it just to kind of piggyback off of what he said, is don't just draw your puppy out of sleep, but get your puppy to get up and walk towards you, towards the kids mm. for a piece of food before they do what he said, which is a scratch of the ears and, and scratch the back and then scoop the, the puppy up. Um, I would also, one more thing, and then we can move on. We have like three minutes. Two, <laughs> two weeks of kids not picking up the puppy. Give that puppy a break. You can work on it, but two weeks, kids aren't allowed to pick up you the just, puppy. You got like 15 kids crying in the living room right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel you kids, I feel you. All right. Work hard and you can pet them. Yes, work hard, earn, earn your pets. That's how it should be. Okay, um, I have a few questions. Puppies fine with crate training from Lalina. But I just don't, I just have a thing about crates because I don't want to be that parent that has their dog in the crate all the time. To each his own, to each his own. I know it feels bad, but the puppy needs to sleep in the crate. Ooh, we've got some back and forth here. I love that. The crate is quiet and they're able to sleep. Way to go. I like that too, putting that crate in the bedroom away from like the main living area yeah. it makes it easier for them to sleep. Most puppies literally sleep 18 to 21 hours a day if you give them the space to do it. And that's how much they need in order to be fully rested and to get that calm, relaxed puppy. They're, su they're supposed to. And then what accidentally happens is we have them out with us and they get overstimulated and so they become more excitable or reactive depending on the genetics of the puppy um, to everything around them and then you can't go for a walk without them wanting to say mm -hmm. hi to everything or pulling towards everything because they actually get used to being overstimulated that is true in the in the early stages of puppyhood they're supposed to sleep that much and then honestly they'll go through a brief period of time where they need more exercise they need more mental work they need more play and as long as you're nurturing that, you can crate them the rest of the time so they don't destroy your house. My German Shepherd, she was two and a half, three years old before I was able to wean off crate with her because she was a big chewer, big chewer. And it just took more time with her than it does with other dogs I worked with. And I'm a trainer, go figure. All right, I think we're done. Do you have anything you wanna to add to that? Nope, awesome, awesome session, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I think um, we have a couple things wanna go before we oh, go. Yeah. So one, we just want to thank everyone for coming. Thanks. Awesome session. <laughs> we will be doing another one next week as well. Good at question. At 1 p.m. Central or Pacific time. Oh, Lord. 1 p.m. Pacific yeah. Standard Time. <laughs> you had to look at the paper. <laughs> so any questions you guys have, please submit them. Again, you can do it in the Instagram. What are the other ones, Ricky? DM. Right DM, DM. Instagram. Or live. Live. Or live. Yeah, yeah. 
There's, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways. <laughs> a lot of different and then uh, all the replays will be available for you guys to watch if you just kind of tune into it later on, you miss something, or even you want one of your friends to check it out. A lot of information to pass secondhand. Have them join us. And We'd please love to. look at our, if anybody on here would like more elaboration, we've had a great uh, deal of different questions for each live, mm -hmm. which has been nice so far. Yeah. So check out our last lives on IG TV. I know, I got it right, except she helped. Just look at our Instagram too. We got a ton of videos of us working with dogs, doing like little graduation videos, working on yeah. so many different things. Come, sit, down, play, stay. It just it gives you an idea of kind of what that's supposed to look like. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for coming, and we'll see you next week. Take care, guys.